Hi right, guys, Cliff here. Do you remember this? We flew it, flew it, free flight. We flew it free flight uh, in the park a couple of weeks ago. And I said I had plans for it. Well, the plans are over to control, obviously. So, so what am I gonna use for it? Well, let's turn you down. I have here the remains of a um, minimum RC. PZL106, I think they are. Uh, came a bit of a cropper, but of course the parts are really useful, so uh, not going to repair it. The motor is a lot bigger than what's in there, so that will cope with the extra weight. Of course, it's going to fly faster, I realise that. Oh, I'll tell you what I must do actually, find a CRG now while I can. Uh, CRG. Yeah, it's not far out, I don't think. There and there. Come back slightly, forward slightly. Yeah, it's about right. Rather annoyingly, I couldn't bind the receiver to my TX16S. Um, I could get the servers working all right, but for the life of me, I can't get the throttle working. I've been Googling it and mucking about and I can't get anywhere, so I've put it back on the um, on this Spectrum DX6i, so everything's working. So it's obviously something in the setup. Anyway, um, I can put the servos in the wings over here. Laying down, I suppose. Possibly at an angle. And then perhaps cut ailerons out of here and have the servos going down at a sort of push rods going down at an angle. I think that's the only way I can do it. And um, and then mount the motor up here somewhere on a sort of piece of plywood sticking up. Motor Last line is there. I have to take into account the head. That's good out of the way. Battery, battery can could go maybe underneath. There's a big chunk of foam here that I could take a, a slot out of there and make it flush. Um, the wires. A bit ugly going on the top. Just wondering if I could make a hole down through, but I don't think I can. The other option is to cut it, knife it down, and just push the wire down into the into the foam, bury it in the foam, which would be nice. And then the servo could mount sort of there, and the push rod could go at an angle. Not ideal, but I think, in fact, I'll cut the ailerons out once I've got the, the servos in position and see how they're working. Let's just see the difference in weight, shall we? Uh, that's uh, a couple of ounces. So currently, it doesn't matter what I use to weigh it, that's 11.7 grams. That is receiver, ESC and two servos, five and a half grams. Fantastic. Five and a half grams. Uh, a motor is going to be the heavy bit. That's six and a half grams. So that's 11, 12 grams. And of course the battery, let's put the big one on for the minute. 12 grams and that's five and a half so that's a total of 12 13 40 15 17.5 and that is 11 so it's another 11.7 uh, it's about another six grams which is let's face it at the end of the day not a lot so that's really light I guess Oh, how exciting. Right, okay.
Um, okay, so I fitted the servos, cut a couple of holes. Unfortunately, I had to go all the way through. The skin was just too thin to maintain. But I shall um, put something over there and paint it. A uh, knife to slot down there for the wire to push down into. At the moment, nothing's glued. And I'm just cutting the slot here for the receiver in the base of the fuselage here. The two wires will just go over the top there and plug in. And I had a thought, not sure about the battery yet. Depends on the center of gravity. I might end up putting a slot in the bottom here or something, but I had a thought about the engine mounting, the motor mounting. I keep calling electric motors engines. Um, I was wondering if I could, I thought of this in, in the night, sort of just have a, say a carbon rod coming up, fixing on to, uh, if I use that, just a carbon rod coming up and sort of gluing into a piece of wood at the bottom, so it's sort of suspended on a rod. Don't know if that would work, it's an idea. Have to see anyway so far so good I think I'm reaching the stage where I'm gonna to have to uh, glue the wings together if I want to start plugging things in almost certainly so yeah not bad progress but a fun isn't it <laughs> okay hinging the control surfaces I've just cut them out roughly well more than roughly precisely Cut them out on the flat part of the aileron because it curves around there. So I'm hoping that this huge angle of the push rod will operate it okay. Anyway, cut them out, angled the leading edge and pushed in the hinges using a pin. Just crudely pushed it in, lined them up, and pushed them in the other side using my favorite, <coughs> using my favorite hinge material. That's fishing line. This is one millimeter trace that's what it says which is about um what's a millimeter it's less than a 16th but more than a 30 second but i find that i found that two weren't quite enough and three is okay but a little bit on the stiff side so what you can do is to thin it down what i do anyway to give it a um, a rough surface to glue is just rough it up with sandpaper, rough up a de decent length that you're going to cut off and then cut it off. But because this is so lightweight and this is probably too thick, so I just thin it down with the blade. Just scrape it down like this, makes it a lot thinner and easier to bend, essentially reducing the thickness of it. You can do it both sides if you want. And the, also the another advantage of doing this, it leaves it really rough on the surface. Got this really rough finish, which is brilliant for getting the glue in. I just glue it in with white glue. Um, don't use CA. Um, I wouldn't use use. Uh, you need foam safe anyway. There, you could use CA as long as it's slow setting. The, uh, the thing is with these hinges is if you glue them in push them all together if this was balsa wood I'm not explaining this if this was balsa wood push them in and then drop put a drop of ca in and it'll wick in enough it won't move so you don't have to sort of run ca all over it and push it in because chances are it'll it'll grab before it gets in properly so don't do that so there just pushed in with white glue here's one i've just pushed in with white glue as well but this is how they work doesn't seem too stiff don't know how much movement I'm gonna need but anyway there we go what I'm hoping is as I say the push rod will work at this acute angle got the uh, wooden control horns off of the old model I'm just going to use um, epoxy resin to glue that in the horn that is and then we'll see see how it works
I mean, it's bound to work to an extent. You probably know this anyway, but on the end of the push rods, they have this little archy bit, and that's for making adjustments. So you squeeze it in to close it up a bit or stretch it out a bit. This one's been stretched out. I can level it up. Let me show you the motor idea I had. I've pulled up the rear piece of uh, plywood on the motor and I've sandwiched in just this piece of carbon, flat flat carbon and the idea is, this is dry in there, the idea is I'm going to, if I can, just glue it straight on to the front of there at the height for the propeller, just glue it straight in there. All right, I've made some good progress, guys. I've just glued in the, actually, come to think of it, the pylon. I've got a little support I'm gonna put in the back, a 45, well, 30 degrees anyway, a little support that's gonna go in there. And I've also made a slot in the back. Can't show you yet till that's dry, but the battery slides right in there keeping it as far back towards the CG, which is where these wires are. But I just melted a hole in there with a long piece of wire. So that goes in there and holds it pretty secure. I put a little bit of uh, epoxy on the server, stop them moving. Yeah, do you want to see the control surfaces moving? I, I experimented by changing the horn position. And in actual fact, I get more throw with and the outer horn than in the inner horn because the inner horn has got so much stress it's bending the uh, connections and it doesn't actually push it any further so just to take that stress off I've put it in the outer hole but they work they work okay um, the whole wing bends a little bit which is good in a way because it'll help it to turn even more all right from the top From the bottom, hopefully you got enough going on there. Not a huge amount of throw, but it should be enough to have some sort of turn. I've got up elevator to come down. I'll just shut the throttle. Um, I was going to try and put it on my TX sixteen XS transmitter, my new one. Everything mixes up lovely, except that I can't get the motor to run, so I don't know why. Placed a little uh, plywood panel on the back of that to hold that in nice and tight. The battery can just slide in there like that, well out of the way, and then I can just connect it on. And this little battery wire can just hang out the back. So it goes in like that. There we go, activated, and let's, let's fire up the motor, shall we? See how it goes. I might put a little bit of CA on that just to hold it. Here we go then, guys. Controls and motor. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it was half throttle. I thought I'd open it up, but yeah, definitely need a bit of CA on there. But So there we are, all working. The CAG is about there, which is pretty much where it was. So if necessary, I can add a little bit of lead, a little bit of weight here and there. But for now, I'd say that was a success. Um, Something I have to do yet is to put on, I was thinking maybe I could put a bit of tissue on there and paint it in. Obviously I can just match the paint to this. But for now, I don't see any reason why, for a bit of fun, I can't fix the nose on. I'm just going to glue this on, plenty of glue. And on it goes. Lovely. <laughs> this is going to be a real laugh, guys, isn't it? I mean, it, it flew okay-ish with the 
free flight, but to stick the radio control in it, it'll be even better. <laughs> That's going to be sticking on. I've got some tissue here. I'll stick this on, then I'll paint it in afterwards. I'll rip the edges to try and disguise it so there isn't a hard edge. But I'm just going to leave that now because until that's dry I can't work on it at all. It's only tissue paper. When that's dry I'll put on some a coat of PVA on the top and then um, I'll go get the paints out see if we can try and match this. Okay I've got out the old acrylics and I'm going for this brownie colour. I'm gonna, not very good at mixing colours. I'm no expert. <laughs> I'm going to put a bit of brown in there. And I'm going to put a bit of, bit of red. I don't know. There's no purple as such. Let's have a look again at that. So it looks about right. That looks pretty good to my eye. Hopefully the tissue will tighten out a bit. If it doesn't, it doesn't matter because it's a wing after all. I'm not sure it's a good idea to paint the motor uh, because it's going to flake off. I'll paint the front bit because that can't be avoided. There we go. There we go. So there we are guys. I'm looking forward to the maiden flight. Uh, it was free flight, now it's radio control, so we'll see. So I've got Elevons and it weighs, you know, whatever the grammage is very nice. That's how we convert a free flight model to a radio controlled pterodon dinosaur. <laughs> uh, if you want to see the flight, maiden flight, be sure to subscribe down below. And if you want to check out the join button, that would be great at all as well. I've got a big project I'm about to start now really exciting so I need all the help I can get in that department so there we go watch out for this video and see you in the next video cheers thanks for looking bye